Well guys, welcome to spring. I know it's been a while. It's been a pretty busy stretch here for me the last few weeks, but here I am on one of my favorite rivers, just uh, down the road from my house. Love fishing this spot. And uh, I'm gonna try, I know we're on borrowed time. I'm gonna try to get in here before the river goes crazy. We are sitting right around 300 uh, cubic feet a second, the river, and it'll soon bump up to like 2,000. So I'll be underwater. The rainbows should be up shallow in this uh, more currenty, riffly stuff. And the browns will probably be right below that, hopefully devouring anything that floats through. So we got about two hours, an extended lunch break, we'll call it. So it's cold. I think it's in the low 40s. Winds are 20 to 30 miles per hour, which I've been told is a fly fisherman's dream. Fingers crossed. Let's see if we can get in here and catch one. Oh. Right there. Right off this right off the edge of this current. Something hit me. Like I've said before, if it doesn't feel, I don't think if it feels the weight of your, if you're not setting a hook into its face, a lot of times I think you'll get that fish to hit again. So if you can get the right float down right there, hit me again, right on the edge. Could be a white fish, could be. Hopefully I'll show you what it is. Okay, it's having trouble staying down because of all the, the stronger current here, which is kind of expected. So I put on another weight, which I mean, I'll either get down where these fish are, or I'll get snagged, or both. Right there. Oh, he picked it up. There. Finally, finally got him. You're the culprit, huh? Wow. Spastic little rainbows. Well, it's a good lake trout bait right there. Got it. Again, that girth is what's so impressive. Want a rainbow? All right, so the rainbows are kind of where we expected. You see this, we got current. And they're not gonna be in the deep holes like they were most of the winter. We're gonna be looking for rainbows in the shallow, currenty stuff, so. We're gonna try a few more cast right here and then move on down and see if we can pick up some bigger browns that are taking advantage of the spawning rainbows and eating anything that floats down as we start to get more water and the river brings more vegetation and, and things kind of developing but also washing down spawn from the rainbows and so that'll be what they're chomping on right now That felt like a stick right there, which is not good. Like you know there's, you know there's gonna be snags here. All right. Boom, boom. Got him. I mean, I don't like getting broke off, but I don't like not catching fish even more. As I'm moving down river and I saw this white thing, which you know, I'm always curious. I'm a curious guy. And it's a massive something. Let's see if I can kick it up here. It's a fish. Oh, it's a big sucker. Look at the size of that thing. That's all bloated. Gross. We'll let it we'll let it float. It won't stink as bad. You now the river's up about 50 CFS compared to the rest of the winter, and that might not seem like a lot, especially when this river is going to go up thousands in the next days and weeks. 50 is just enough to change up the holes you've been fishing all winter. It's going to look a little bit different. So where you found fish, you know, a month ago might be a little bit different than, uh, probably is going to be a little bit different than then. So. Pretty sure we got a brown here, guys, right below the, the flow. Not huge, but a feisty one. 
Oh. I had lost a small rainbow up there in the rapids, kind of where we thought the rainbows would be, and time was running short, so I thought we'd come chase these instead. What a fat, chunky brown. Nice, beautiful fish right there. I love the colors, I mean, give you a drink. But just look at those colors, the big spots, I mean, it's just, they're all so special. All right. I don't know, you got a preference? What would you catch if you had the option? Browns or rainbows? Let's say they're about the same size. What do you prefer? The last few years I've been more of a brown guy because growing up, I didn't have the opportunity to catch browns. At least not like this, where we're catching fish that are averaging 16 to 23 inches. I mean, that's amazing. The rainbows are about the same size, but I've caught a lot of rainbows in my life. And not until like the last four or five years I've been catching a bunch of browns. So I'll take the browns. Well guys, it's, uh, it's cold and windy. Fishing is kind of slow. I've caught a few, lost a few. Just kind of got to this spot here and I'm trying to get tucked out of the wind for a minute. It's like 20 to 30 mile per hour winds. And uh, it's cold, but I got to this spot. And I wanted to sh I wanted to show you guys something that I, I want to show you guys something that's just remarkable about this about this area, about fishing for browns in town, about how catch and release works. I love fishing this river, and I don't I I love ke uh, keeping fish. I love eating fish, and you can do that on this river. And I I do I occasionally will keep some rainbows, but um, browns I almost always release just because they're they're kind of more of a I don't know, a trophy in a way to me on this river because it's right in town. In December of 2020, I was fishing on the bank over here. I didn't even have my waders. I just came out here quick, my muck boots, and there was a pile of brush uh, that's not there now, but I saw a fish jump just past that or surface. And sure enough, I, I hop on that pile of brush, cast down there, and bam! I think it, I'll have to go back and check the measurements for sure, but I think it was a 21 inch brown. Just incredible fish. We had a very distinct mark on, on its cheek was a seven, like a pattern of a seven. Sorry, the geese are just, it's, they're all nesting and everybody's mad at everybody. And so I catch this fish, it's got a seven on its cheek, super easy to like pinpoint. Wow, that's, that's definitely a, a noticeable marking on that fish. And so cool fish, made a video about it. I think it was like two or three weeks later. I'm fishing on this side. So come out on this rock pile here, fish underneath this tree, hook into uh, another big brown, and sure enough, same exact fish. So that would have been early in 2021. Beautiful fish. And then I don't catch it for quite a while. I see another guy, he's got to put a link to his, I remember watching him, he's fishing this exact same spot. He catches, again, the exact same fish. I think that would have been 20, 22 maybe last year could have been maybe almost a year ago he caught it and then this winter 2023 remember last time i caught it was 2021 i'm fishing the exact same spot and i already had a great day up river cut some really nice browns i get to this spot right here and i hook into a monster fish and i land the net oh and i didn't think word. about it at the moment but as i went back and watched the video as i'm editing the video i'm like Oh my gosh, that thing's got a seven on its cheek. And as I look closer, sure enough, it was the same fish, had the same cheek pattern. You could see, without a doubt, same fish from 2020. So 2020 to 2023, four times there's been documented catching, being caught and released. What impressed me mo most, I think that fish gained a couple inches, but it was the girth. Super fat, super healthy. I mean, compared, I mean, it, it, when I caught it in 2020, it had a big head and a skinny body. It looked like it was not getting fed. And uh, since then, it's been eating lots of carbs. It's been eating well. So it has gained a lot of girth. I don't know if it's still here. I released it without a problem. I'm assuming it is. So maybe you've caught it. About three full years of catching the same, of catching the same trout. These geese are out of control. Anyways, I'm going down to one more hole. It's cold. We're gonna try to fish it and then uh, get back to work, so.
guys just hooked up here. Didn't have my GoPro on, I guess. This feels heavy though. Been trying to get out of the wind a little bit here and it's cold and finally came back down the river and right away. Wow, look at that brown, what a jump. That was, that was awesome. What a great fish. What a great fish. Let's see if we can get him a little bit closer to show you guys. I'd like to see him. That was a jump right there. Come here, you. So strong. In the net. There we go. There we go. Well, I apologize, guys. You missed the hook set. But it wasn't that impressive. What's impressive, though, is this fish. I'd say it's long. It might be 20 inches. And that is how we're going to end the day. Right there. With that beautiful brown trout. I was just saying about how cool it is to be able to film this stuff so you can see I don't know maybe I'll fish this hole again and well I know I will but maybe we'll get that same fish see the cool markings on there they all have their own distinct look own distinct spots there it is ready to go well guys as much as I want to sit here and fish more I need to get going so appreciate you guys watching on this spring day it's cold it's windy i need to get back wash my hands i am using shrimp today if you're wondering what i was using little hook little weight and it's about time to switch over to some more uh, aggressive baits as soon as the water warms up a little bit more it's still pretty cold we'll switch to some more action some more fun some rapless some big stick baits for for these big browns so Maybe I'll make one more cast. Ugh, that's that's tempting. Let's just ask him for trouble though. All right, I'm gonna shoot these geese quick and then uh, we'll see you guys soon.